Harmon Warhol coming at you with the Harmon Warhol Show. I have a special guest for you. It is my friend, my peer, rapper, musician, Braxy. Good evening, bro. Hey, cheers it real time. Mm. I'm going to finish mine. So I have the Stella today, and he has the kombucha. Go ahead and uh, plug that kombucha that the kombucha you Yes, here. this is, uh, I don't even know what company, a seasonal. And it's a chai, it's pretty good. I get it at Grocery Outlet for that discounted price. Yeah, yeah. I actually drink kombucha uh, when I go to Burning Man. I drink that uh, a couple times when I go to Burning Man, the probiotics and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Cause you can actually, there's a little bit of alcohol almost in it. Some yeah. of them have like purposefully like, you know, go to the grocery outlet and get a 9% kombucha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, yeah. I don't think you're faded at the same well, time. Well, that's what the one was one girl told me about. She was just saying like, hey, if you let those uh, kombucha stay out in the heat too long, you know, the alcohol content will get, more. it's almost like, it's almost like uh, having fruit, you know what I mean? Uh, like almost like fruit, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, not recycled, digesting, or whatever. Uh, when fruits decay, or okay. whatever. And like the yeast will start the to yeast, act Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you actually be able to get drunk off kombucha, bro. Interesting. Yeah, know, that's what they, they say, like, even though it's like 0.005, it's still, still pregnant women must not, you know, yeah, abstain yeah. from drinking this drink. Yeah. It's interesting. So, yeah, so Brass has got the kombucha. I got the beer. I got the Stella. You know, that's my favorite beer of all time. I love the green bottle. I love the smooth flavor, and I love the practicality. But, uh, so go ahead and send more Stella, and go ahead and send more kombucha of the what? What's it called? I think it just said seasonal, honestly. I don't, I don't always keep track. It's seasonal. It's called Chum Hum Chai. Yeah. It, it's got some cool graphic, though. Yeah. There's a lot cool. of people walking around. I'll get, a clip. I'll get a clip and put that up. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. All right, so then the next thing we have, actually, is this art piece that Braxy had from, what did you have, actually, have from it? Oh. So we could show it really quick. I have another clip too. I have For sure. Clip. So yeah, I go to this music festival uh, called High Sierra. High Sierra. Yeah. Uh, so it's in Quincy, California, and a lot of our viewers maybe don't haven't heard of Quincy. It's a random. I don't know what the fuck that is. Yeah, Quincy is like it's it's in the middle of the Sierras. It's pretty random. It's a small town of probably like three thousand or four thousand person population. It's a tiny little city. So the festival is like a big money maker for their city. It's, okay, it's good yeah, yeah. They so they put a lot into it. Yeah, it's like the naysayers that don't like this festival coming to their city are, are shut up by like how much money it brings in. A lot of people host their house for like Airbnb for the fest. And uh, like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big fest and like, at least for this tiny city, maybe there's only 13,000 people at this fest, but it's one of the few festivals in California that's still like, you could bring an open bottle of beer from your camp to the stage even. So it's not okay. all commercial and corporate, like yeah, buy our yeah. cup and buy our this. Because it's more uh, helping the city. Yeah, it's like a hippie thing. fest. Yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of Woodstock-like, to be honest. And like, then, so yeah, what I want to say is one thing. I love Rick and Morty. Yeah. You love Rick and Morty. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we love Rick and Morty, bro. Like, Rick and Morty is the shit, bro. And uh, honestly, you said you put those stickers on it, right? Yeah, it matched the color scheme. It they did. almost blend in. It blends in. I honestly thought that was a part of the art piece. No, I know. It works so well. I was like, you know, I didn't want to diss the original artist, but I'm sure he'd be cool with it himself. You yeah, know? and we do not know the original artist of this. Braxton can't remember. Tall White Hippie Man. Tall White Hippie Man. Shout out to Tall White Hippie Man. Thanks, bro. <laughs> for giving us a dope art piece yeah, to talk yeah. about. And also, uh, thank you, Braxy, for putting the Rick and Morty piece. Because honestly, I thought that went with it. Yeah. It actually kind of uh, goes well with the... Uh, the art and then just the perspective of Rick and Morty, what they bring. Yeah, that's funny too, because like, you know, if, if it was this way, it's, it still almost goes. It just dic dictates it a little differently. Well, yeah, because of the drip, you know? Yeah, or the drip all the way out. Yeah, yeah. 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 See, look, look how you were looking at it, look how I was looking at it. Like bro. it's dripping down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Who knows how this dude did it, bro? I'm sure, like, under the right lighting, it pops a little more too. If it looks like in a black light, it might look cool. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the guy was cool by helping me out with that, and, uh, I came to the festival pretty broke, and the people I go with have a bit more money than I, and they, they set up the camp so beautifully, so the guy was just trying to help me out because he knew I didn't have a lot with me. And and he hooked you up. Yeah. yeah, bro, I love I love. He wouldn't take no for an answer. So again, bro, uh, go ahead and give us some more beer, and go ahead and buy and appreciate more art. That is oh, yeah, definitely what I want to... Yeah, I didn't even get one of those. I feel like on everything that you say, that's really good. <laughs> I agree! Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, but definitely, bro, I, that's the one thing about my podcast is what I'm trying to bring is not just the rap and music and just the content and what I'm, it's really just, I love the things that we do and the art that, art, it's at the end of the day, it's art, and 
Like, if yeah. you're able to, I mean, I do my own little art or whatever, but this and like stuff like that, we talk about, we're able to communicate, and we also give our own perspective of it. Oh, Look how we were able to flip it on all different sides and around. You yeah, know? Just by, and we, you know, that's like all, that's all organic. Yeah, that's exactly. All you know what I mean? And it's like, I used to do visual art myself, but I just haven't done it in so long. I'd love to get back into trying to hold a paintbrush and see where that goes. Yeah. It's just music takes a lot of my time these days. All right, so actually talking about art and everything, this is Braxy. This is, uh, so in going to a different, instead of talking about another artist uh, this week, I'm actually going to talk about Braxy. And Braxy actually is not only a good friend of mine, but he also is part of Rebel Activity. Um, and we'll talk about that a little later. But uh, Braxy is actually an artist that's been around for quite a time on the Stockton scene. And I just wanted to talk a lot of, not a little bit, but a lot about him. Because even the things that I've been hearing about or talking to him today recently is surprising. So just to go into it, bro, like, uh, you were in some punk rock bands and shit. <laughs> yeah, so I guess to start the, music, the musical journey or saga... Is so the, you are born and raised in Stockton? Yeah, 19, born and 1990, 1990, St. Yeah. Joseph's. Yeah, so born in Stockton. Lived in Stockton almost all my life. Uh, yeah, and music stuff started pretty early. I uh, started playing drums in fifth grade. I was in the regular like school band thing, so uh, all the way through high school. What instrument did you play? Uh, snare drum and like just any, any drums pretty much, cymbals or whatever, anything percussion. Okay. So I never really read notes. We had to play xylophone one year, but I just like kind of faked it the best I yeah. could. Well, don't they start you usually on that? On the xylophone? They call it bell kit. It was yeah. heavy. It was really heavy. I remember just hating carrying it around. We had That's this practice huge. pad and this huge bell kit. Yeah, it's huge. And it only had like, I think one octave. Yeah. So this is kind of boring. It's still big. <laughs> and it rings so loud, it like, you can barely hear it with all the horns. It was just kind of ridiculous. But yeah, I played drums for a long time and that was like my instrument that I excelled the most in and then started a few bands and the first one with my friend uh, Stefano was just called The Screaming Silence and we were just didn't know what we were doing we were training we were playing like covering when the Saints go marching in <laughs> and we were just like you know we didn't know what we were doing yet it was pretty like novice but it was still fun it taught us how to like have strength of performance and just yeah, like yeah. we still put on a couple shows and we even we even pressed an album uh, with like a CD stomper that we got at Office Max where you can push the little like, you know, the little plot like, old school is Yeah, the little sticker that goes on the CD. Damn. And we did that in seventh grade. So like we put Damn, we put out a hundred oh. CDs when, before we were in high school. So that's okay, so that's the thing with me, bro, because I didn't have that uh, musical uh, initiative or intent. I'm surprised we did even. You know, yeah, that's crazy. what I'm saying. Like for you guys to do that at such a young age, but when you hear a lot of rappers and people and everything, you know, they actually start at a very young age. Yeah. When you hear, I'm just like, I always use people like Little Pump for an example because he's sure. one of the biggest popular rappers, right? Yeah, he would scream and sing and do everything. Little Pump fucking started when he was freestyling with his cousins and making videos. He didn't get serious until, you know, a year or two okay. ago, but he was freestyling. There's videos of him freestyling getting ready. So that's what I'm saying. With you doing your music and stuff, which you do right now, this started at seventh grade, bro. It didn't start fucking when you got serious about it. When you were having fun, right. that's when it got serious. Bro. No, I know. I appreciate you saying that, even because a lot of times I'm like, well, it's as musicians, we start to almost say another answer. Like, I really started when I was 19 when I started to rap. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I started when I was 12. 12. You yeah. started when you were 12. Bro. Yeah, that's yeah. where it all starts, yeah. And that's what it is. I mean, that's and that's what makes you a better artist. But then from those, from the playing band and everything, or not playing band, but playing in bands and uh, being musically inclined and being in bands and doing stuff like that, then you actually start, how'd you get into rapping? So I guess it's the easiest way to say it is like that first band was like not the greatest, but our second band got a little better and had like melodic structures. And I didn't even know I liked rap, but I'd always like if the song was like, or like this, the champ had this rhythm that almost yeah, was hip hop. I just yeah, didn't know it yet. Yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong, the fast parts where it's all screaming were fun too, but when we slowed it, the break dance. break dance. Those are break dance because you can repeat them, and that's yeah, hip hop. And it was, hip hop is being, the you loop. get the, be yeah, the best parts of the song, oh, yeah. and looping them is hip hop. I think I always kind of liked it without knowing I liked it yet. Yeah. And I only grew up on like, uh, when I was younger, the only rap albums that I had in my house when I was really young, suburban white kid growing up, were just uh, Stankonia, which I loved by Outkast, oh yes. and, uh, and yeah. Dr. Dre Chronic 2001. Okay. And what's Eminem. Your what's, your song? what's your favorite song on that album, uh, Chronic 2001? Oh, that's tough. Really? Is it? I don't know. Baby, baby. I like 
don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You want to see? Bang, bang, bang. Yeah, I, I like that one. It's tough though. I have to go back and listen to the album. I know there's one that has like melodic structure that was like mine's, mine's the one with uh, Eminem. Explosive or whatever. Mine's Eminem and uh, Exhibit. Yeah. Mine's Eminem and Exhibit when it's just like. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember. If I if I we listen, if we prepared more, I would have known for I would have been able to write the uh, recite the words right now, but I can't remember right now. But Eminem and uh, Exhibit and shit when they fucking uh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Some, oh, what's the difference between me and you? Me and you. Me yeah. And me. He goes on that. Bro, one. that shit. It's just more even not even the beat. It was just the concept. Oh, that. Even it, it, yeah. It literally it, it's not the even with that album, bro. It's not even the music. It's the Fucking perspective on life. Yeah, and just the soundscapes that Drake creates. That's it's beautiful. Like, it's like, bro, it's crazy. But yeah, I love that album. But Stay yeah. Gonya, I think, was more important to me than that album. One just taught me about how beats can, like... I think Dr. Dre's album, when I was that young, just taught me how beats can sound like really filthy and nice. But Stay Gonya was all weird and unique and fun and zany. And it just taught me how artists, like, can do some weird stuff. Yeah, like a bunch of skits on that album, and it was like. Yeah, he actually had a lot of skits on that album. Heck so. He actually had his dick sucked on. <laughs> he was fucking some girl. Oh, that yeah. Was I was like, like, get off the blow, bitch. <laughs> that was, like, staying, that was a crazy crazy album, album, bro. Or they have, like, the. Uh, yeah, Alright, hey, wait, 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 one second, bro. I'm gonna look at this real quick. Are we lit? Hold up. You got lights? Hit those two right there. Alright, that's a little better. Alright, we're cool. Yeah, I had to interrupt that, bro, because it started getting late, bro. We're fucking. Uh, time change, too. Time change, this shit came forward. But now it's a good time to go ahead and break into the next fucking topic. So you had. So you were in seventh grade, playing in bands throughout high school and everything like that. Grew up in Stockton. Then you found out that you actually. You liked rap, and then you started rapping in Mass Avengers. Yeah. So, like, junior year. Lil Wayne was popular. Bro. Um, Andre Nicotina, Kanye, these were like the main guys I was listening to. That was like graduation released my senior year of high school when I was graduating. So uh, that was pretty big. Good morning. Yeah. Oh, beautiful me. Yeah. Bro, that's the same thing with me. You graduated what? Oh, wait. I heard graduated. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so like that album was big for me, and I fucking ditched class and went to Target and went and bought that album. That's an important like, album. Against uh, Fifty Cent. The battle, album. even they had like yeah, against them, bro. I ditched class, went to Target, bought that shit, That's and drove up. around, and for a whole that whole period, I um, ditched and listened to that album, bro. Yeah, I feel like everyone was in that. Everyone was listening to that bro. album. Bro, you like hip hop. Come on, bro. Right when I played it, in the first thing, come on, and yeah. Ooh, oh, here's another hit, Barry Bonds. Oh, yeah, oh. Yeah. Uh, because Barry Bonds is so controversial. Yeah. You got Lil Wayne. Bro, I didn't even listen. Bro, when I was growing up, I listened to everything of rap and everything. Once I got to high school, I stopped listening to uh, mainstream rap for like a couple of years. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Once Soulja Boy came out. Because I actually knew about Soulja Boy and Kid Cudi when they were on MySpace. Mm-hmm. Before they even had a record deal. I was all up on those blogs and all yeah, that yeah. shit. And then I was just like, I was, and then it wasn't even me being a rapper. I was just a kid. Curious, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then they blow up. And then they blow up, and like the thing is, it made me hate it because I love them, but at the same time, I'm like, bro, this is what's popping, bro. Like, I mean, you want to guard them when you're almost like when. Well, when I, I love those art. I don't love Soldier Boy. I love Kid Cudi, but uh, as far as Soldier Boy, I thought it was very a novelty and funny. You know what I mean? Before you know it, but then it got yeah. taken serious, and then but then the thing is, Little Wayne bringing it back to you, Little Wayne fucking got me out of it because it was like, bro, no. Rap is supposed to be fun, and it's supposed to be expanded, and, and it's all perspective. It can be both, yeah. It can be both, bro. Like Lil Wayne literally showed me that, bro. Hey, rap can be serious and silly. No, yeah, he taught me a lot, too. And it's like, I can't give enough depth to Lil Wayne, bro. If it wasn't for Lil Wayne, bro, I'd been still listening to Outkast Stankonia right now, and not listening to anything. Yeah. Here. Think about not listening to anything. No, I, feel, I used to think, like, Nas and Wu-Tang were the only thing. Only thing. And I was like, Nas, Wu-Tang, Atmosphere, yeah. and I all the bro- within that. Yeah, bro, and you don't want to be boxing, bro. I'm sorry, bro, but there's some little Uzi Vert songs I like, bro. But I know. I, I love all music. I love Trust all me. I'm on the same. Kodak Black's good. Fucking, even like I said, Little Pump. Fucking, all these dudes have, now they're not my favorite artists, but I love some of their songs. I, I love them. And a lot of these new cats like Jid and like Earth Game. Oh, Jid, bro. Jid, Earth Game, bro. Come yeah, on, bro. Let's get fire, bro. I know. Jid, whatever it's been. Fucking, come on, bro. We could go on and on, bro. Yeah, but yeah. Master Master just bring it back to Master Avengers. Yeah, so... I was playing a bunch of punk rock bands, and uh, 
I was starting to listen to a lot of rap, but I knew I wasn't good at it yet, and I feel like I was a fraud from the get-go because I had to learn more about it. So I started listening to a bunch of rap, kind of studying the art form. And you're white. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, it out. I literally like I got my I got my bachelor's in rap pretty much. I was, I just go on Wikipedia and find all kinds of stuff and uh, listen to it, the form as much as I could. And then my friend Shane had already been rapping and like even doing like graffiti and like he knew a little bit more about hip hop culture, so he kind of like ushered me into it and. Uh, we started kicking freestyles like on long drives over the Bay Bridge when there's traffic and kind of training ourselves. And if he freestyled better than me, it'd make him want to freestyle better. Yeah, it was a competition. Yeah, and then before you know it, we were freestyling at parties and we were making music and making beats. And we started rocking shows. We played for like five years. That was like a pretty long going duo. And we had a lot of good times in the Stockton scene. <laughs> well, I have to say that you guys did have a good run, bro, because I was in Indiana at the time, bro, doing my college thing. And I was like, coming back to town and seeing you guys on MySpace or Facebook. Yeah, we did both. We went through both yeah, worlds. Yeah, we went through both worlds because I remember on that. I forgot and you guys that. actually had uh, people watching you and I was like, who the fuck is this? And I come back into town and people actually knew who you guys were and you guys were actually performing and doing shows. And then, uh, we'll go into this in a little bit, but fucking hearing from Zach from uh, Dialect, he was just saying like, yeah, he's from Mass Avengers and everything comes back in my mind. I'm like, oh, fucking Mass Avengers. I remember these. Yeah. You guys were actually selling shows. You guys actually were noticed. You guys were known. Yeah, it was just like, like you guys had videos and everything. Like, bro, I like remember like who the fuck is this and looking it up. And then when he brought it back up, it made me go do the same thing again. And I was just like, that's crazy, bro. And that's why like being here with you now is even like a whole another fucking three sixty. Yeah, because that was like two thousand eight to two thousand thirteen were like yeah. our main years. Yeah. Yeah, and then, times. yeah, and so that's, I mean, that's fucking great, bro. And that's cool, I appreciate that, like, even over when you were moved and you are out of the state, you still had, like, noticed it, which is which is a cool validation, too, that what we were doing was noticed. Yeah. Which is awesome. And so, like, during, so after that, so 2013, you say that was, like, your guys' years and end, so then you guys finished that, pro that thing, or what happened with that? We pretty much had, like, a last album that we never recorded. It's, like, the special, or if we ever blew up. Cause he's doing solo music these days. I'm doing solo. If there's ever like an E true Hollywood story, the album that never dropped, the yeah. album that never released. The last one we were making was called Mass Boys with a Z, and it was it was a fun album. But we were just getting busy and kind of like it, we were starting to go our own directions, not just musically, but even like I was like, I was gonna go yeah go to Hayward to get my undergrad, and okay. like, I only had two years left of college to finish and get my diploma, which I was pretty stoked on, and. Uh, you know, I get it, but the main thing that ended us playing like shows and working together is I didn't want to have to ask him to drive out to Hayward just to like, you know, to always like play a show and things yeah, like yeah. that. We got busy, we both have lives and everything like that. But those five years we were always rocking shows and that last year we played a couple of tours even where we played in like Washington and Oregon and played with our friends the Illusionists, who are these uh this rapping duo out of Oregon. They're really cool guys, uh Evan and Sammy Warmhands. And that was an awesome tour. And then we kind of move on and start doing solo stuff, but we still reach out. And he's doing a lot of music these days too, where he's putting out videos himself and they're looking really clean. He's yeah. doing his videography style really solid lately. Nice. Yeah, like his lighting is pretty epic. It looks really nice. So for sure. So yeah, just life happens and you guys, you know, you guys grow and you guys don't want to either do the same thing or just not even do the thing at all, you know? What I mean? Yeah, or don't get me wrong, like if we ever put out like, like a three song EP in the next couple of years, it'll be fire, it'll be a cool project. Yeah. You just gotta find the time to collaborate with people, cause like, I, I'm gonna make an album with Matt Still. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. I'm stoked on that. Hey, so that's another thing, so before we go into Three Thieves that I wanna bring up too, cause of like, uh, of what happened after that, but I'm like, yo, bro, like, I'm super excited to make more music with you one day. Yeah, you know? Because we made one song in my project, Stockton Renegade, coming out, it's actually, I don't know, whenever this post, it should either be... No, wait, what's next week? So next week, it'll be a week from now, I think it's Dr. Renegade comes out. Bro. I think, so I think next go. Friday is the 15th, I think. Yeah, no, yeah, Friday. next Friday, but it'll be the week after that. So okay. like next fucking... So when this drops, motherfucking a week from late, now. Late March. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like March 21st or something. Cool. March 21st, Mar uh, you'll hear Braxy on my album and a lot of other uh, stocking cats. That's stacked. So, like, uh, you said you were, uh, so you were in college, so that's what, like, you were in Hayward in college. Cal State East Bay, yeah. And the locals get pissed about that. You know, they say it should be Cal State Hayward. They're always fighting for that name. But East Bay has a bigger, like, people know that if you had some job in New York and you're like, oh, I went to Hayward, it was, it was Hayward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, that's why I went to Indiana. That, like, the reason I had a bunch of D2 schools 
they were gonna give me a bunch of scholarship money, but I didn't go to them because I went and fucking uh, went to Indiana University. Yeah, so I knew when I got my degree, Indiana University, I wanna go to bum fuck nowhere university, you know what I'm saying? I loved it over there though, Cal State East Bay was like, you know, they always had these cliches about college that I almost didn't believe. My dad was, was like, you know, when it's all said and done, this is the best point of your life. You'll look back on it like these are the best years. College is the best. And my dad doesn't say stuff like that very often. I'm like, oh, you're exaggerating. No way. I didn't yeah. believe it. But shoot, those years were amazing. It's because you find out who you are. That's yeah. The best. And I feel like I had a lot of free time. Even though I had to work and hustle and like make sure I had money and everything like that, I have a part time job and this other part time job and go to school and all this stuff, I still was like exploring the Bay Area on my mountain bike and just. You know, felt super free doing that. It, it was awesome. It was really cool. Sporting cities I hadn't seen before. Yeah, and just like testing yourself, being a better person. So yeah. Not, so like, so growing from bands and then going to rap music and everything like that, kind of fizzling off on your duo with Mass Avengers, and then you're going into college, you're figuring out who yourself is more. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. And then now uh, uh, you're actually a teacher now, mm -hmm. okay? So you're a teacher now. And you doing your own hip hop thing, your rap stuff. You've been you did the Braxy EP. Yeah, yeah. So that's when I was over in Hayward, and I wanted to release something while I was over there. I wrote a lot of songs in the small garage I stayed in, and I just put out a four song EP. I haven't put out a lot of solo stuff, but it was a simple one. I had my friend Shane from Master Avengers and my friend Johnny Cossage, who's in Final Last Words. Shout out Final Last Words. Final Last Words. <laughs> yeah, if you guys have never heard of him, check him out. He's a cool pop punk band from around the area. But yeah, you know, uh, Braxy EP was just like a culmination of that. And my friend's dad, Rick Hudock, did the art and it came out pretty cool. He goes, I gave him no direction. And he goes, oh, you, you stay up pretty late sometimes. And I was like, yeah, he goes, you're a night owl. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, I'm going to make your head a moon. That was the, you can, we, can, we can flash the image at one point during this too. We'll, we'll do that in post. But like, you can do that? Yeah. yeah, yeah it, it's, 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 I always remember, I was like, is it going to work? But it came out cool. It's like this hooded moon with like, these trees in the corner and it looks pretty cool. I like that. He had like no vision. He just went into it. He was he heard the music and stuff. Yeah, he he didn't even want to hear the music at first. He goes, I'm just gonna make it like night theme. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Well, yeah. And then uh, going from that, you're doing I, I think you're doing shows and stuff, you know, performing. I saw a video of you or whatever. And then you met uh, dialect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, part of Rebel Activity that we're all a part of and everything. I actually give you a shout out on the song. I need to let you listen to that. I have my project already on my uh, shit and I let you listen to it. I give you a shout out on one of the songs, but uh, nice. uh, you and Dynamic meet up at one of these rap shows or whatever. Yeah, it was that channel. Channel. That's a historical night right there. You can even see Andrew, Yuck Nasty, and Zach dialect like in the audience in certain shots, like just digging it or smiling. You can see you in some of the shots yeah. too. And uh, that, that show at Channel, I, I met y'all, like, after. And I, I remember meeting you after that show, too, because your energy was super cool. And I was like, yeah. dang, who is this guy? Because nice. you were just like, it was cool. Like, you, you kind of almost brought me to the crew more so than any of them, because you were just like, hey, man, like, your rap's tired. We should rap together. And then you guys gave me this look, like, right after the show, like, oh, but yuck, nasty. It's like you guys were already digging up his production. Like, well, okay, so but going into that, before you keep going on that, so that's the thing about like me, bro. Like uh, I'm more inviting of a character, you know what I'm saying? Because like uh, about your rap style, me breaking it down, bro. Like I respect your rap ability. Like not like as because as far as content, we're different. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? like, like I say with you and Dialect, like, you guys have complementary styles because you have the same kind of style but different content. Yeah, know? yeah. But me and you and stuff, I just feel like we're so different. I, I look at you and I'm like, you're different and you have, your flow is crazy. Even in these freestyle shows and stuff that I have clips of and everything, like you see, like the way you're able to do it on point and your vocabulary and sure. everything like that, it's super dope, bro. Like, so sometimes even when I'm like, oh, I don't get it or I'm not on board right away, because of how you are and who you are with me and everything, I listen to it more and I'm like, bro, he's, he does even more than I think, you know what I mean, right away. And like that's why I like your content, I like your rhyme schemes, I like the uh, the beats you the beats you even pick, you know I what I mean? Are even distinct and different from everything. I like people who are different. That's why I like Dialect, like, that's why I like Drew, that's why I like fucking Dairy Fields, that's why I like Serious P. If you just sound the same as me or sound the same, I don't like you. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you sound like everybody else, if you're just doing some basic shit, if you're doing something different. I like you a lot, man. Well, I feel like you're a lot different. of weird artists. Too, yeah, so you're, you're, you're a different that. person, and especially with your beats and your sound, you're different right off top. Sweet. I yeah. appreciate that. That's what it's all about. I feel like and 
I can have some tracks that are like kind of like trap or maybe a similar style to what's in just to have them because I feel like they're important. But then I want some to almost be so weird that like I want to see what people think of yeah, that. No, yeah. Track four is supposed to be weird. I want to see what people think. And, the, and, and if I like it, that's all that matters. You no, know, and that's and that's me and you. I think where we relate on it. Yeah. That's why I like you so much because you're able to test your audience. You know what I mean? That's a fun thing to do. You know what I mean? Test your audience. Hey, let me see. Okay, you're able to go this far off the cliff. Let's see if we can get you a little bit more. Exactly. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, I got to write a show one time where I like ripped the mic out of a socket and was on the ground, wrapped up in the mic cord like a mummy, screaming without it plugged in. And it's almost like that's like a rock frontman thing. Yeah. And it was super weird. And I thought, I'm like, am I doing too much? And my friend said, Did you have good stage presence? My friend said I went full ODB. He would go at full ODB. He said, Don't go full ODB. Full and I was like, It's full retard. That's <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> full retard. Yeah, full but retard. he's like, Because you know, ODB has that presence yeah, too. Yeah, he goes, Maybe a little bit less ODB scale. And when I go that hardcore, it, it's fine because there's certain people will be like, man, that, that was awesome. And maybe I drank a few too many beers that show and I forgot my lyrics and I was having fun, but yeah, who cares? Yeah. I think rappers are sometimes too much known. Not all rappers, but a lot of rappers, especially the opener of a big show for just walking the stage, barely moving. Being cool, too cool for school. Yeah, bro. maybe not sweating in a nice t-shirt even. Yeah, bro, like, why be too... Uh, that's They're barely moving. I don't that's do like my beef. beef. I don't do I don't that. like them they don't move at all. Hopefully, I don't know if you, when you see me perform... I'm no, not, you don't. You're moving. You're like, I don't, don't, want, to write, I don't want to be too cool for school, bro. No, you're, you're, you're intermingling with your audience, and I love that about your craft, too. Yeah. And I think that's super important, because, yeah, I've been, I've paid, like, 40 bucks to go to a cool show, and the first two guys are just like, I want everyone to keep their hands up for a minute right now. Yeah, like, hey, you didn't earn that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what's up? You don't even know you. That's I know cool. everyone loves me. I'm the new favorite rap. Whoa! I'm the best ever. I'm like, man, no, you're not. All right, so go ahead to uh, Rebel Activity, bro. So how's your music and your just style, your perspective and everything? So like, so after all, so again, going through it, you you're a kid. You're playing in bands. You're playing punk rock. You find out that you actually love the rhythm and breakdowns of hip hop music. Yeah. And you go ahead and massive bangers. You do that for a while. You get some notoriety. You find that you have not more differences, but just life takes you guys different apart from Mass Avengers. And then you go ahead and you keep doing your thing and doing your own way. But then you meet, you meet me, die, yeah. and yeah. fucking get chapter next. three. And you guys do uh, three thieves. So yeah. go ahead and three thieves and have that. You know that was cool. Uh, so I met you guys at that show and. I want to say like within four weeks of that show, I already had a Yuck Nasty beat in my Gmail account. Yeah. Something real quick. We started our project, and Zach's had a song that was going to be on his next EP, and uh, after what I will, and it was originally just going to be a dialect track, but then he was like, oh, you can feature me on this one, and our styles just clicked pretty quick because he was trying to like put imagery and like description kind of flow and like go into topic. You guys have very complimentary styles. But yeah, it worked well on that project. We just kind of started bouncing ideas off each other and we would just wait and we wanted the whole project to be produced by Yuck Nasty, so like we would just wait on a beat. And Zach would always give me like the magical feeling of like these beat packs. At first I didn't know what he meant, but he'd be like, Oh, you know, he'll send us four at a time, just wait patiently. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then he sent us four, and we'd have like, oh, another forty percent of the album's done. Yeah. Once yeah. we finished those tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Andrew was stoked to, like, I'll, I'll never forget this. The coolest thing about this project was, yeah, it started happening fast, but so fast that Andrew was like, Dang, you guys are done writing? I gotta make another beat. Yeah, 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 we put this pressure on him that he's like, not all artists always do that, you know, and I get it. He gets annoyed if he gives up someone a fire beat and they're not gonna use it. Let me get it back. Then. Uh, like, I can like, send it to somebody. Exactly. He'll rap on it. That's what I'm saying. That, and he, he's uh, a good rapper. So, like, yeah. the fact that me and Zach were eating the beats up super quick, it was keeping him on his toes. And we did, he was, he even told me, like, when I didn't know him that well already, that he appreciates my, my craftsmanship and, like, kind of my work ethic of how quick I write. Yeah. I don't memorize that quick. Me and Zach would always make yeah, jokes yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah. Zach, uh, I'll just say, Zach, Zach is a pro, pro memorizer. Zach is a pro memorizer, bro. Well, I, and I he think, memorizes my words. I, I guess, <laughs> I guess, he's amazing at it. I guess my only defense is that I have, like, it's hard for me to delete songs. Like I have all the MA songs still memorized, all my old yeah, Rhapsody yeah, songs still yeah, memorized. Yeah, yeah. So much. Yeah, I'm bro. like, man, I wrote like 20 songs bro, with a word. Bro. I don't know what so that much. is, but I meet certain artists who are like Zach, and I'm just like, like that. how do you memorize that? Place? I gotta go over to live time. I gotta go, bro, I practice. If I have a show, I gotta practice all day, bro. I don't memorize lyrics. I'm good. not great at it. I'm, I'm not good at medium. Bro, when you say you're medium, I'm terrible at it. Yeah. I have to practice it over and over and over again if I have a show to it. memorize it. It bro. depends on the track for me. It depends though. on the track. Though. Some tracks sink in quicker. It's crazy yeah. how that happens. Well, it's more, more, more relatable, and if they're more entertainment based, then I gotta really remember it. 
Yeah, yeah or if it's like if I wrote a song that's simple, like duh, 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 like simple rhythm, it's oh. easier. But I pack so many words in some tracks. Yeah. I wrote like an essay. Don't you hate like, it? I'm gonna memorize my essay. Like, when you're rapping and then there's like a part in there and you're like, fuck, it's not even a hard it trips thing. You up. It's not even hard to remember, but you gotta make sure you're bred. It's a tongue twister. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a tongue twister. And you gotta make sure you prepare for it. I have that. a couple of those on the Three Thieves album where like no matter how many times we play it live, there's a few lines where I'm like, why did I say that string of words? Hey, it's a weird string so of words. When you guys were performing the Three Thieves, bro, at these house parties and at oh, these so shows fun. and everything, bro, like honestly, bro, like I think that's like both of you guys is like it showcases you guys' talents like tremendously. I appreciate it. The chemistry works well with us. Very well. And you know, Shane from Master Avengers, the first time he saw us, was like, oh, you know, you got you, you guys have that duo quality too. And like mm-hmm. everyone that's seen us it just vibes well. Vibes well. That's what I say. I'm hopping around. Stars. I'm like hopping the whole time. Just because Yuck Nasty's on the DJ doing his thing, it, it just makes me want to jump around. And it maybe when nice. I was withdrawn, older version of myself, more shy, I wouldn't do it. But nowadays, yeah, it just sounds nice. I'm hopping around, having a good time. We vibe off each other really well. So when we play the show, first we were like, oh, should we play it in this order? Before you know it, we're like, well, let's just play the album in the order it was made, like track one through seven, pretty much. That's a fun way to play it. That's like our yeah, favorite yeah, way to play yeah, it. Maybe yeah. take a brief break in the middle, but. Yeah, yeah. As, and I'm like, this makes me think we gotta start playing some more shows. We played a couple, but we need to play more because they're super fun. It is, yeah. You guys actually have a great set. When you hear the songs, it goes up and down. You have Tandori at Night, or Tandori Nights, which is more of a fun song, but then you got the, uh, I don't know what the song, uh, Fun. Nice but, guns. Uh, nice that guns. Like that's yeah, sad, heavy. Yeah, but you guys show a lot of uh, styles and a lot of uh, content that you guys can touch on. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, that's and the poor city is like the party jam. Yeah, yeah. and you guys can, are able to do it. People like, I mean, there's songs that I like more than other people. Like Tandoori Nights is not my favorite, bro. But a lot of people. And it's funny because it's it's probably my favorite. Or my yeah, top yeah, two. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just because that those eight oh eights he put in. Yeah, I think yeah. it's just his bangs. No, it's a fun song. You know yeah, I mean? but the thing is, I like when you guys get a little dirty and a little bit more. Grimy. Uh, yeah, grimy and more a little. Uh, you know, thinking about reality more. Yeah, and yeah. You can say you guys are just flowing and gripping it. You that know? one's just fun. I I think the reason I like it so much is we did a music video for it, so I like memorized it better because mm-hmm. we went over it so much times for that video. It's like concrete in my brain now. Yeah, that's a fun one. But yeah, that album's cool. And Zach and and Andrew made it really a good experience for me and. It taught me to also be able to step back and just release something. I get overly perfectionistic sometimes, and towards the end of that release, I was like, wait, I don't like my vocal here, my yeah, vocal here, my vocal I here. Like Super, like, don't get me wrong, they're minor things, and they're just like, dude, it sounds great. And I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, okay. The, what, the thing that helps me personally is that knowing that the next song is always going to be better. I know what you mean. There's always someone to build. There's I mean, like, I have an album... It's not going to come out for a while, but it's, it's okay. going to be like 14 tracks probably or 15. Even. So let's talk about that. So what's in the future for Braxy? So let's, so all the viewers know, what's the future for Braxy? What's coming up? What do you have ideas? What are the things you're interested in? Let's go in that for a little bit before a we ton. So Leftovers, for one, I'm producing him an album that I'm going to feature on a few tracks. Leftovers with Pedro. Shout out hey, Leftovers. Hey, shout out Leftovers. I just actually went and watched a movie with Leftovers. I watched Alita with them. What, this weekend? <laughs> Not this weekend, but like two weeks. Oh, nice. Good yeah. stuff. We're going to do a podcast meeting him about a movie. Sweet. Uh, yeah, so that's one thing. And then we're kind of moving slow on that project, but we're giving it the time it needs. And then uh, I'm really excited to announce, so this is like the big one, that I'm going to be doing a duo album with Mad Spill, mm-hmm. who's like one of my favorite rappers in the city. He's, yeah. he's awesome. and uh, He's on my album too, so check out Mad Spill for sure. Yeah. We're good. Yeah, and he's, uh, we're doing a duo together, and we're already like halfway through the writing process. We're going to record it at This Is Stockton Out LA, my homie Daniel's spot, and uh, we're going to mix it ourselves with his, with his help, and that album's going to be really cool. And then beyond that, I probably want to put out a few singles, a few music videos. I'm working on two music videos right now, one by uh, Joel Munoz, who works at the same high school, Lincoln High School, that I teach at right now. He teaches a videography class, and it's so cool that we have a class like that, where kids can learn how to use Photoshop right, and videos. So we kind of skipped over it, and then going into it, you can go back to what your future is, but like being a teacher, so you're a teacher, mm-hmm. how is that in life right now? It's great. I like it a lot. Uh, I guess, you know, you hear people sometimes, it's really classic, I've learned this, that like, our society, you know, this gets deep really quick, but our society doesn't always honor teachers as they should, and in a growing, exponentially changing era of technology and the workforce changing, robots might replace a lot of jobs, and all kinds of crazy stuff like that, not to be a a Debbie Downer, but this is like being a realist, and... You know, a lot of times when I tell people what they what I do, the first thing they'll say is like, oh, how do you do that? They must be like jerks working with kids. They must be tough. 
people have this kind of backwards view sometimes. It's like, if you're nice to people and you give them good respect and you're cool with them, and like maybe that I listen to rap or that I freestyle for my students or things like whatever it is, if I give them the time of day and I give them the benefit of the doubt, they're all great people. Yeah. I'm blessed to be working with good kids, but you know, I think if you bark at them, do this, do that, do this, no one's gonna respond to that. Yeah, no, we you don't want to preach. You, you had at least one teacher like that back in the yeah, day, right? Yeah, that was just yeah. like, that you don't wanna do anything for them because they're just, they're mean, they're, yeah, re they're yeah, rude. Yeah. And why are you gonna to wanna to be, for, and those are the teachers that I would put my hood on and put my headphones in and just and tune them out. So now, yeah, and yeah. don't get me wrong, students are gonna try it in my class even when I make it fun, but yeah. I think being like, Zep's coined the term too, like a hip hop educator, yeah, like I teach English, but I also have such a past in hip hop that I could intertwine these ideas to the lessons and talk about what I know of music and what I know of the recording process. And it doesn't seem like it would always fit in American literature class, but it definitely can. And it's just a pick me up. If I freestyle for these students on a Friday, they see me as less of a talking head and someone that has like bars freestyling. Yeah. And if they, if they give me 10 topics and I tackle all 10, and the only way I don't hit well is sports because I didn't grow up big on sports, and so be it, they still give me all this credit for being like, oh, he, he ripped all those topics. They will remember it, bro. When they yeah, it, exactly. It, yeah. And if they get some boring teacher the next year, they're going to miss me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so no, it's fun. and It's cool that I have a job that I could like rip freestyles to my students and it's not like a weird thing. My district's supportive of it. I feel like I could be in some state, like in the rural, rural area or the south where they'd be like, well, or I don't even know, this is just like speculation, but I bet some districts in the US would be like, sorry, you know, we can't, we gotta yeah, keep that. Yeah. that, that's its own world. I wouldn't keep that in the classroom. So I'm lucky that like, you know, it was put in a department video. People have my back on it because what am I doing by freestyling? Just using words. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. So poetry is rap, they're all the same thing. People just sometimes are like, well, Lil Pump's not poetry. Yeah, he is, he's yeah. just not your favorite poem. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And people get too wrapped up in like that. You brought that back to that. Yeah, yeah, why not? Because yeah, people are always doing that. They're like, well, what you do with that freestyle is you use big words and beautiful diction, so that makes it more like elevated and important. No. No, like maybe that's what I do and that's what, how I can impress adults or something, but if I came with some grimy flows too, that's, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. It's all about just like poetry is poetry. And I'm like, what is that? Oh, like, that's me. Well, I don't know. All right, so well, to go ahead and uh, close this off, man. So what's uh, so you have a project coming out with Leftovers. You got a project coming out with Mad Spill. Uh, is there another uh, Rebel Activity, Three Thieves uh, type project coming out again? Too? I'm like, we have a lot cooking up. So two duo albums, two music videos, one Joel Munoz, one Brian Dunn. Those are from my, uh, my recent release, Footprints. Footprints. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to bring that up. Footprints. That was all good. Footprints re released recently, and yeah, we had a cool uh, release show at Blackwater. It was a great time, and you can find Footprints on Bandcamp, on SoundCloud, on Spotify, on Apple Music. If you just search Braxy, B-R-A-X-Y, you'll find it. And if you search my Instagram, Braxy49, you could also find it that way. But that was a fun project, and I want to release at least two music videos from it, so they're in the works right now. Yeah. And maybe more. But then with, with Dialect and Yuck Nasty, we'll definitely have Three Thieves Part 2. We don't know what it's called yet. It'll probably be like nine or ten tracks, and it's just cool thinking about it because we haven't started it, but yeah. it's gonna be cool. I think you guys should do a bigger project for the second one. For yeah, sure. like a full length or nothing. Like a full, like a no, like a full like because you guys did like what six songs, right? The yeah, I think time. seven. Six, seven. Yeah, you guys should do a, a bigger, a little bit bigger one because like, like eleven or twelve. Yeah, just because like you guys can get touch on a lot more things. I feel it. Like, yeah, we can go more styles. Then I have my album, which is gonna take a while to launch, but I'm just gonna probably call it Fumes and Fresh Air. I like the concept of, you could even just say almost yin and yang if you boil it down to the basics of like fumes, you're like trapped in with some kind of stuff you don't want to breathe in, but fresh air is like going on road trips or going somewhere far, or like making music or playing a show. Or All right, before we end on this, you go on road trips by yourself, bro. Yeah, that's my unique character trait, I guess. As long as I have someone to meet up with, I wouldn't drive like all the way to Denver like I did in summer without having like my cousin was in Boulder or like with something like that. Yeah. But I don't mind going by myself. Yeah. The main reason I do that is because people bail and like honestly. Bro, like, yeah, people are shitty. Bro. Yeah, and I've gotten to the point where I used to get like butt hurt about it and I'm going up to the point now where I'm like, I'm going. You can't go. I'm going no matter what. Yeah, but you can't rely. You can't exactly. Your, you can't and rely. I, I know how to have fun on these long trips for myself now. It's cathartic or like maybe a better word is just therapeutic even, you know, because like you're on the road for long enough, it's just. It's crazy. It's like meditative out there. Yeah. 
All right, man. Well, I think that's a good way to end it on there, bro. This is Braxy. This is Harmon Warhol coming at you motherfucking live with the Harmon Warhol show. We had a good one. Go ahead and check Braxy's uh, music out on iTunes, Spotify, Tidal, all the streaming services with Three Thieves. You got the yeah. Braxy EP. You got Footprints. And new full length on the way. And a lot of more projects. So go ahead and check him out. He's a Stockton local, local native. <laughs> Braxy's a Stockton local native artist. He's a rapper and a producer. He's getting into beats here now too. He's been starting to do that. So check him out. I have a bunch of links. And thank you lovers, listeners, and friends. I, I do. I want to throw out this man as an English teacher. So... Get creative with his topics. Autism! Autism! Pancakes! For real, pancakes, bro. Pancakes? He did pancakes before. Yeah, I did pancakes. You did? I did drugs. There's a picture with pancake on your... I remember pancakes. Breakfast! 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 Here we go. Yo, it's not my culture, but it's okay. They got power, not vultures. Opposite, queens. Gotta respect them. The best, bless them. Everybody rap them. They came from place, and they are here. And everything, everything I've learned is from them. They are my dears, and they can shine bright. Like them goblins, and like them stallions, and like them prophets, and that's real. Egypt, everything we feel, I'm thankful for everybody in this room that feels F-E-E-L-Z. Yes, this is me, and everything that I be doing, I'ma tone it down, see, it's like my black women are so great, yeah, I wanna praise them. One more time, I am feeling like malaisin, or maybe raisins, up in the sun, that's Maya Angelou, if you know rappers, it's the one I need to call Yes, I want world peace. We don't need to be divided. That is some bullshit. And one more time, I'm doing it. No full clip because we drop the guns down. We don't need violence. One more time, and everybody can try it. It's like peace, peace.